If you're looking for an extremely easy way to blur your webcam background just like this, then let me show you how to do it in OBS Studio. First thing we need to grab is this free OBS plugin, which I'll leave linked down in the description below. You're just gonna download whatever the latest release is. For me, it is 1.1.7, but if there's a newer release, then go ahead and click that one instead. Then once you've clicked on it, we're gonna scroll down until we see the assets. Here, you'll be able to download whatever type of computer you have, if you got Mac, if you got Windows, if you got Linux. I'm a Windows user, so I'm going to use the x64 Windows installer.exe. So I'm gonna click that. The download has started. Once it's done downloading, we're gonna run that bad boy. Once you run it, you might see this little pop up here. Basically, all you do is click more info and then run anyway. That's just a false positive, which happens with a lot of different antivirus when you're installing these third party OBS plugins. So we're gonna click run anyway. Then we're gonna click next. This part is extremely important. We're going to install it to where we installed OBS Studio. I have mine installed on the C drive program files OBS Studio, so I'm going to install it here. If you installed it somewhere else, then please click the browse button and install it to wherever you installed OBS Studio when you first installed it. Then you can click on next, and then next again, and then install. Then you can click finish, and now we're gonna boot up OBS. And if you already had it open, close it and reopen it. Once you have OBS Studio up and running, you're gonna go to the top where it says help, and then you're going to click check for updates just to make sure you are on the latest OBS Studio update. Click OK when you're done. And you might be wondering what this own pro tab is next to the help tab, and that's actually today's sponsor. You guys probably already know that you can switch between hundreds of different overlays already inside OBS Studio when you have the own pro subscription, but they actually just came out with a brand new AI stream assistant, which can be found on the dashboard of their website in the bottom left corner. And you can ask it any streaming question that you might have, like give me fun channel point ideas is when I'm playing a Star Wars game. And then it'll spit out its answer. In this case, it gave me a ton of different Star Wars themes, channel point ideas, and little redemptions that I can use for my stream. So if you wanna be able to switch between hundreds of different overlays at the ease of your fingertips, as well as trying out their brand new AI streaming assistant, then I'll leave a link down in the description below where you can check it out. And you can use coupon code CPAUSE for 50% off your one year subscription. So now that our OBS is up to date and you've installed it to the correct location, the correct folder, otherwise you're not gonna see it. Then you're gonna go to the sources, you're gonna click add a new source, then you're gonna click video capture device because we wanna add our webcam, right? So I'm gonna click okay. You could also call that webcam so you're not gonna run into issues later because you don't know what the heck you called it. But now we're gonna choose our webcam from the list. I'm gonna pick one of my Insta360 links, my favorite webcam. This seems to be the one I'm using right now, so that's embarrassing. I'm gonna use my second one, which should be that one. Beautiful, loving it. We're gonna click okay. And now we have our webcam on OBS Studio. But now the fun part, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna right click the video capture device here we're gonna click on the filters button right here. So click that. Then we'll see audio video filters, which we don't really give an S about. We're gonna go down to where it says effect filters. Try saying that three times fast. So we're gonna click on the plus button under the effect filters. So we'll click plus. And if you do not see background removal, that means that you installed it to the incorrect folder during the installation process. And if that's the case, all you gotta do is uninstall the little plugin that you installed and then reinstall it as we did at the beginning of the video and make sure that you choose the correct OBS Studio folder. And once you do, it will show up in your little plugin folder as we have it here. So once you've done that and you see background removal, you can simply click it. You can call it whatever your little heart desires. I'm gonna call it blur because I tend to forget things rather quickly. So that's what works for me. And by the way, if you wanna see more helpful videos like this one, make sure to drop a like on the video so YouTube recommends more of me to you. But once you've named it whatever you want, you can simply hit okay. Now so you can see things better, I'm gonna move this over to the side so we can adjust the settings while seeing the actual image. Now this looks pretty doggy doo doo, which we do not want. What we're gonna do is first off, we can scroll all the way down to where it says blur background factor, because obviously you see the background's gone. Well, we just wanna blur it. We don't wanna get rid of it, right? So what you can do is you can just drag this and it'll bring the background back, and then you see that we have the blur. However, what I recommend starting off with is actually going back to no background that way you can see the edges around us so we can tweak the settings and they'll make a little bit more sense because we'll be able to see them a lot easier. So if we scroll all the way up, we can see the threshold value. So we can turn it all the way to the right and you can see that it gets a little bit more compact. So right here, it's cutting into my face. We don't want that. 
So if we go all the way to the left, you see it's a lot more lenient to where it's not even there. So if we just have it all the way down here, I'll leave it maybe right around here. I found for my personal preference in my webcam, it's better to have a lower threshold. Otherwise it's like cutting into my face like this. It depends on your situation, but I'm gonna leave it to a lower one. For the contour filter percentage of the image, I personally haven't had too much good luck with this. You might be able to experiment with it. I feel like just leaving on the default value is okay, or maybe, I don't know, right around here. I personally don't see too much changing when I'm changing this value, so I tend to leave it right around here. The smooth silhouette is nice because you can see that the lines are a little bit jaggedy. So if I have it all the way to the left, you can see how awful this looks. So honestly, I like to keep it all the way up here or maybe maybe down here. I'll keep it max for now. The feather blend silhouette is super nice because you see how these lines are not that kind of like faded. It's just like a little bit jagged. So if we drag this up, you can see that it almost kind of like fades in in a way. So if I have it all the way here, it's almost like blurry, which I feel like is a good effect. So instead of having it here, or here, maybe have it somewhere in the middle or maybe a little bit higher. So this part is personal preference. I'd leave maybe right around here, I would say, but you can see that the uh, <laughs> the threshold is much better because if we have it higher, it's even less of me. So I'm gonna have it pretty much as low as it can possibly go. Unless you're having stuff pop up in the background, then that's not good. I feel like this is okay start so far. It looks pretty, you know, compact, but when we have the background in, it's not gonna be as bad. So moving on to the next part, we have the inference device, which basically this blur effect will use up resources on your computer. So if you're experiencing lag or latency or any kind of stuttering effect with your live stream or your computer's just not able to handle it, you can feel free to switch between the CPU and the GPU. Depending on your system setup, it might vary. It might benefit you to do one or the other. So if that's the case for you, you can feel free to mess with that. I don't mess with any of these other settings here. So we are going to turn the background back. I'm gonna change it maybe to like two or three. Because if you see, if we change it all the way here, that's just way too much. If we wanna go back to maybe three, I feel like is a solid point, then you can mess with the blur focus point. As you can see, my face is now getting a lot more blurred. But if I go all the way to the left, it's not as bad. Right around here-ish. Yeah, pretty much the default value. <laughs> and then we can change the blur focus depth. So if we turn this all the way here, it's kind of a very subtle change. You can see mainly like right above my hair is where it kind of changes. So you can kind of see like blurry hair, not as blurry hair. It's very, very subtle. You might not even be able to see it. I'm just gonna have that boy all the way max. These are the settings that seem to work best for my setup with your setup, with your lighting or your webcam. You might have to tweak these differently. And if you're struggling getting a quality image out of the webcam that you're using, then watch this video below me. I go over how to get the best quality from your webcam in this video, so go watch it. Well, my name's Cody and I'll see you in the next one.